students, so once again, I'm Sean Xavier Alcalita. So we're moving forward to chapter 3 and lesson 4 of our STS subject that concerns about the nano world or the nanotechnology. So let's take a closer look. So before we proceed, please don't forget to like and subscribe to my YouTube page. Okay, so lesson objectives. At the end of this lesson, the student should be able to define nanotechnology. Um, the next one is to characterize the nanoscale. Um, describe various uses of nanotechnology. Uh, discuss concerns in the use of nanotechnology. And explain the status of the use of nanotechnology in the Philippines. Nanotechnology is a field of research and innovation concerned with building things, generally materials and devices, on the scale of atoms and molecules. A nanometer is one billionth of a meter, ten times the diameter of a hydrogen atom. So the diameter of the human here is an average of 80,000 nanometers. As such scales, the ordinary rules of physics and chemistry no longer apply. For instance, materials characteristics such as color, strength, conductivity, and reactivity can differ substantially between the nanoscale and the macro. Carbon nanotubes are 100 times stronger than steel, but 6 times lighter. So on the next slide I will show you one of my favorite um, scenes from the movie Avengers Infinity War. It's nanotech, you like it? Hey, do you know what nano means? It means small, very small. It is a million times smaller than the smallest measure on a ruler. If you want to get an idea of how small a nanometer really is, you'll need to take a piece of hair from your head. Go on, it won't hurt. Got it. Now take a good close look at that strand of hair. Not much to look at, is it? If we were to shrink you down, smaller than the smallest thing you can see with the naked eye, you will find that your piece of hair starts to look a lot more interesting. You are now about the size of a red blood cell. Your strand of hair is a massive tree compared to you. Even at this size, you're still about a thousand times too big to be considered nano. To get you down to the nanoscale, we will have to shrink you to about 100 nanometers tall. Hey, where are all the lights? You are now smaller than the wavelength of visible light. You are practically invisible. But for the sake of demonstration, I think we should turn on some lights. This size, the red blood cell is 1,000 times bigger than you are. It is like an enormous stadium. Welcome to the nanoscale. You could probably hold a common cold virus in your hands quite comfortably now. The rhinovirus is only about 30 nanometers across and is nearly impossible to see next to the red blood cell. A red blood cell is too big to be considered nano. However, it's made up of all kinds of nanomaterials. If you were to look close enough, you would see that the outer walls of the cell are stabilized by a flexible, mesh-like protein skeleton. The bars and connectors that make up this mesh are considered part of a nanomaterial. 
Without these reinforcing nanostructures, the cell would be much more fragile and not nearly as flexible. It wouldn't stand a chance in your body. Everything is made up of nanomaterials. Nanomaterials are an arrangement of molecules and atoms that, when combined, create stable building blocks that can be made into larger, more complex materials and structures. Which is pretty much everything, including this little piece of hair. I bet you didn't think there was so much going on in such a small amount of space. Okay. So the scientists use special types of microscopes to view minute nanomaterials. So how to view nanomaterials? The first one here is the electron microscope. So it utilizes a beam of electrons to light up a specimen and develop a well-magnified image. Another one is the AFM or atomic force microscope. So it makes use of a mechanical probe that gathers information from the surface of the material. The next one is the STM or scanning tunneling microscope. It enables scientists to view and manipulate nanoscale particles and atoms and even small molecules. Okay, so let's proceed now to the ma nano manufacturing. So it refers to a scaled up, reliable, and cost effective manufacturing of nanoscale materials, structures, devices, and systems. Nano manufacturing leads to the development of new products and improved materials. So there are two fundamental approaches to nano manufacturing. The first one is bottom up fabrication. It manufactures products by building them up from atomic and molecular scale components. The other one is top down fabrication. So it trims down the large pieces of materials into nano scale. Okay, so there are new approaches to the assembly of nanomaterials. The first one here is the, um, the deep pen lithography. So the tip of an atomic force microscope is dipped into a chemical fluid and then utilized to write on a surface. The next one is what we call it as a self-assembly, a set of components joins together to mold an organized structure in the absence of an outside direction. The other one here is chemical vapor deposition. Chemicals act in response to form a very pure high performance films. The next one is the nano imprint lithography, generating nanoscale attributes by stamping or printing them onto the surface. The next one is what we call it as the molecular beam epitaxy. So depositing extremely controlled thin films. Um, the other one is roll-to-roll -roll processing. Constructing nanoscale devices on a roll of ultra-thin plastic material. And the last one is atomic layer epitaxy, so laying down one atom thick layers on a surface. Okay, so what are the distinct features of nanoscale? So the nanotechnology involves operating at a very small dimension and it allows scientists to make use of the exceptional optical, chemical, physical, mechanical, and biological qualities of materials of that small scale. 
So number one, we can see the here is the scale at which much biology occurs. The second one is the scale at which quantum effects dominate properties of materials. And the third one is the nanoscale materials have far larger surface areas than similar masses of larger scale materials. So, what are the benefits and concerns of using nanotechnology? So, there are concerns that need to be addressed before using and promoting materials derived from nanotechnology. So, nanotechnology is not a single technology. It may become pervasive. So, nanotechnology seeks to develop new materials with specific properties. The other one, nanotechnology may introduce new efficiencies and paradigms that make some natural resources and current practices uncompetitive or obsolete. So, it may be complicated to detect its presence unless one has a specialist tools of nanotechnology. Okay, so here are the example of areas affected by nanotechnology. What are the possible benefits and what are the possible concerns? So for the environment, so the possible benefits would likely to improve the detection and removal of contaminants and the development of benign industrial processes and materials. So for the cons, we consider here as the high reactivity and toxicity, pervasive distribution in the environment, and no nano a specific EPA regulation. As to the regards of health, it may improve medicine because in the nano scale, it may uh, uh, there may be a research that it may also can cure cancer. But for the concerns, it may you cause the ability to cross cell membranes and translocate in the body. And moreover, there is no FDA approval, uh, Food Drug and Administration approval needed for cosmetics or supplements. And as well as in the areas in economy. So for the economy, uh, the benefits would be a better products, new jobs. But the negative here, the negative aspect here is that there will be new jobs, but the redistribution of wealth and the potential cost of cleanups and healthcare. So, accessibility to all income levels. Okay, so for the lesson summary, so the nanotechnology is an advanced interdisciplinary field that encompasses science and technology that manufactures materials of great help to the improvement of various areas of society. So it is a field that needs to be explored not only by known experts but also neophytes in order to advance our knowledge of science and technology. So before we engage in nanotechnology, we need to take into account the social, ethical, and environmental concerns of using such nanoscale or nanomaterials. Okay, for your assignment, we are consider here the discussion points. Uh, three questions you have to consider. First one is what are the nanomaterials and how are they made? The second one is, what are the factors that need to be considered before manufacturing materials through nanotechnology? And the third one here is that, what are the contributions of nanotechnology for the improvement and sustainability of our environment? Okay, so that's all guys. So thank you very much for watching. So please don't forget to
to like, share, and subscribe to my YouTube page for more videos. So once again, I'm Sean Xavier Alquilita, now signing off.